and welcome to Young Money. I'm Nozi Pombandra. Today we're in the heart of Johannesburg. We're at Harambe and we're about to speak with a young man by the name of Rotonda Munyai. He is a data analyst at Deloitte. So let's find out why he's at Harambe and maybe this has got to something to do with how his journey first started. Uh, Rotonda, Hi. it's lovely to catch up with you, you. Uh, at Harambe. But yeah. let's maybe start here. Which part of your professional journey starts here? Tell us a little bit about that story. So, uh, I came to Harambe in 2013. Mm. That was after I graduated at University of Venda. I spent six months without getting a job. So someone told me about Harambe, that's when I came here, where we are today. So, when I get here, I went through the assessments and interviews. Mm -hmm. So, I made it. And then there is what they call the bridging here. So that's when our journey starts. Mm. What did you focus on in your bridging here? So the bridging was uh, more special about the uh, soft skills. Mm. Because you know, a skill about the work you can learn in a workplace, but soft skills, something that we graduates will like the most. Mm. So that's what they offer here. Mm. Yes. But then there's this, uh, this another approach called impact sourcing, um, and this has got something to do with how you get to Deloitte. So bring impact sourcing for us and help us understand, it's a big chunky term, what does it mean exactly? So impact sourcing, uh, we can simplify in this way, it's uh, social uh, opportunities given to those who are from the disadvantages uh, background. So what happens is they look for those you know, if you're from the rural, you hardly get information about what's happening in the corporate world. So for me to know about the Deloitte, I couldn't know if I was still in Limpopo. Mm -hmm. But when I joined uh, Harambe, that's where I started knowing about it. So eventually, this opportunity to uh, get placed in Deloitte comes about. What was the experience of transitioning into the world of work? Do you remember what that felt like? Well, because of where we are today, like. This is where my memories are, so most of things are coming back. Yeah. Because I remember when I started, I failed two interviews. Those were the call center interviews with one of the biggest companies in the uh, call center world. Mm. When I failed, they told me about the accent. My English was very bad, which I didn't deny. But because I was hitting up inside, I came back and then they trained me. Mm. So that's where uh, I, I, I now felt that I was ready to, to go into this world. Mm. But another thing was to, when you go to Deloitte, to fit into the culture for Deloitte, it was another thing. Mm. But I was fortunate that because of Harambe, they, I was well trained for such things. Mm. Yes. And so when you went into uh, Deloitte, and this is a, an experience maybe many other young people have, and they find that the corporate culture is almost a shock to them because they just don't expect, uh, they've never been exposed to that particular True. culture. How did you make it? Well, because uh, if you allow yourself to, to be flexible, the moment you allow yourself to be flexible and then accept any challenges that comes your way, that's how I will. Mm. Yes. And so you, go, you got into this role of being a data analyst. What does that involve exactly? So when you talk about data, uh, when you, if you ask people, most of people they'll be talking about the uh, data capturing. But data analytics, that's when you are dealing with uh, data information from company. Mm. So it's a transition where you take data for the company. Yeah. So the data that they can say, it doesn't have a meaning to them. You manipulate that data, you clean the data, you go back to them with something which is meaningful, something that can help them to derive more profit. Mm. That's what uh, data analytics. And what did about. you have to study, Rotondo, for you to be able to go into the data analytics space? So the good thing about this was, you didn't have a specific qualification. Mm. As long as your degree had the analytic part, mm. because I did uh, cost and management accounting. There are some people who did me uh, mechanical engineering. There are some people who did the bio whatsoever mm. in engineering. So you can see that it, as long as there is that thing of analytics mm. in your degree yes so you've been with uh, Deloitte for about two almost two years almost now. two years yes. now uh, what does the future look like uh, is the plan to stay longer at Deloitte or are you looking at other opportunities well the, the future is bright eh? so about uh, for now I can say 
I can see myself still being a Deloitte for a long time. Yeah. Yes, so, but if there's opportunity, you never know. So tell me a little bit about maybe some piece of, pieces of advice that you would share with other young people who were in a similar position to you. So they've graduated from either university or a, a technicon or technical colleges and they're not finding employment. What should they do in your view? Well, if they went apply to Harambe, I think it's time they can apply. Mm. I know in social media you may find that there are people who are busy saying that Harambe doesn't help and so on. But if they lack patience, mm. that's when they can see that it doesn't help. If they can be patient enough and try to apply on the, on the side so they can get help. I'm also interested in the soft skills uh, that you said made up the, the bridging course. When, and, and oftentimes when you go to university you learn the hard skills, the technical the skills, yes. and nobody actually teaches you the, exactly. the soft skills. Yes. What are some of those skills um, out, outside of learning uh, to perfect the English language? What are the other things that you had to learn? So you see, things like standing in front of you or standing in front of the masses. Yes. You need to have a confidence. So most of people, they struggle with their confidence. Uh, you can say, let's go to, let's just say the FNB, uh, per se. There are so many people inside and I had to speak there. I must say, I can't speak because of, I lack confidence in myself. So here they teach you to have that confidence. Mm. So, so there's a lot of work that happens with the internal person. So your own self-confidence, your ability to engage with other people. Are you also taught the skills of relating with, uh, with other people, especially because when you get into the world of work, uh, you're meeting people of different cultures, different races, different expectations, and you're performing one team. one team. How important has that part of the journey been for you? Well, for me, I can say, maybe that's because I'm talkative. <laughs> I can say it wasn't that difficult. Yeah. But even here, they, they, um, they encourage you to interact with people. So it doesn't mean because I'm used to, to be with you every day, I don't have to interact with other people. Mm. I need to interact with people in different teams in order for me to gain that confidence that I can survive mm. out there. Yes. So young people are clearly obviously working on themselves, whether it's through Harambe or other platforms, to get into the corporate space. Do you think that corporates should also learn to make the culture that you come into a little bit more inviting, a little bit more easier for you uh, to, to thrive and to perform in? And if the answer is yes, what do you think corporates should do to make it easier for young people to succeed? So that uh, might be difficult because depending on which uh, corporate uh, company you're going to, for now, for, for, for where I am now, it's easier for everyone to adjust. So. Mm. Talk a little bit about your family yes. um, and, 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 and where, you, where you come from and the community uh, that uh, you come from. Give us a little bit of background on that. So where I come from is in a rural area yeah. uh, in Limpopo, Bembe. So that's the places where when there's no water and there are taps. So you know where you need to go to a street to, in order for you to get water. We sometimes go for months and months without water there. This means in order for us to survive we need to go into the rivers that's where we're going to get water. Mm. So even lack of information in that place is, is something that uh, we struggle with. Because if you can ask me 10 years back if I would have known about the data analytics, my answer would be no. Mm. Because we don't have such information. We have a university uh, in Tando where I started. But these big companies, mm. I haven't seen them going there. Mm. So you can already see that there's a problem with the corporate world and the rurals. So mm. it's like they don't come together. How do we bridge that gap? How do we make the space between uh, the urban world where the corporates live and the rural areas where many people like you and I come from, how do we bridge that space and make a, a, a country that has less divisions in terms of the rural and urban divide? So I think uh, it, it, everything lies with the corporate world, the, the companies. They've got that perception that everything good, or people, the best people, are in the urbans. They need to go to universities, like I'm talking about the University of Venda. They need to advertise themselves there and spend time, maybe uh, adopting schools that are from the rurals, and then that's how we're going to be bridging the gap. Mm. And then also the young people uh, from the rural areas, is there anything that they can do 
to become more attractive to corporates? So we cannot say they're not attractive to the corporate. The corporate underestimate what's in the rural. Mm. Yes. We've spoken about corporates and what they can do. We've tried to speak a little bit about what young people can do. Do you think that the government has a role in helping uh, young people who come from the rural areas to access opportunities in the urban areas? So yeah, the government can play a major role. Mm. You know government, it's everywhere. So they're the ones who can take those companies, they can drag the companies and say, okay, can we do project together in the rurals? So I think that's one thing that the government can do. What's your dream for South Africa? South Africa? Well, if we can have a South Africa that they don't, we can say, we don't have the rurals, the so-called rurals and the urbans, where we have got everyone is equal and equal opportunities, like what our Mandela wanted, so that everyone can have equal opportunities. Do you think we're headed in the right direction? No. Huh. Not really. Not really. Mm -hmm. And what do you think are the biggest stumbling blocks that are making our progress so, slow? So you, if you see everything that's happening in South Africa, they make it to be political. Mm. So if they can, uh, for a minute, they can forget about uh, making everything to be political and focus on what's good for South Africa and not for themselves. So that's mm. how we can be heading into the right direction. And my final question uh, to you, Rotondo, your personal dream for yourself. I hope that we would one day catch up again and have another conversation. And let's say that conversation is five to ten years from now. Where do you think we'll be? And uh, what would Rotonda have achieved by then? Maybe I'll still be in South Africa. <laughs> so, but anyway, I'm joking. Um, I, my wish is to have a company uh, of which I can work with Harambe to empower other youth. So. Hopefully that's the dream that I can achieve because I know there are so many people who are also uh, uh, who appreciate what Harambe did to them who are also thinking about the same thing. So hopefully I will meet one of them and then we can do that. It's been a fantastic conversation with Rotonda Munyai. He is one of the beneficiaries of uh, the impact sourcing program that runs out of Harambe and has been at Deloitte where he has been placed uh, at least two years ago. Uh, he is a data analyst uh, in the data analytics space. Uh, he says he's very comfortable with where he is, but he does have big dreams, setting up his own company and one day creating a South Africa where the divide between the rural and the urban fails to exist. Thank you so much for making the time to join us. My name is Nozi Pombanjwa. If you want the Young Money team to come to you, all you need to do is just follow me on Twitter. That's at the real Nozi or at CNBC Africa. Don't forget the hashtag is Young Money for 10.